Okay, so this second video is going to show you some of the basics of using the actual score sheet, um, creating assignments, duplicating assignments, um, editing the assignments, and then of course uh, filling in the grades. So uh, no matter what page you're on, even if you scroll through some of these tabs, you'll notice that what stays um, stagnant is, is this toolbar up here. So you always have this ability to toggle uh, between terms, between classes, between groups. Um, and then of course this button over here, <clears throat> excuse me, that says create, you always have the ability to jump over here, hit create, and then hit assignment. So it lets you create an assignment quickly and easily. So, and this is, this right here, this first drop down under classes, this is the single most asked for um, update within the new uh, Power Teacher Pro gradebook system. The ability to assign an assignment to multiple classes at once. I know this doesn't affect all of you, but <clears throat> those of you that teach multiple um, sections of the same exact class, uh, we're having to go in there, create the assignment, and then of course duplicate it. It was real pain, it was very time consuming. So now of course, if you would like to, you can come in here and assign um, the assignment you're about to create to multiple classes all at once. So let's say that um, it's the beginning of the school year and I want all of my classes um, to sign a class contract. So I'm gonna come in here and just say, I want all four of these to do a class contract. So I'm gonna click them all. Um, and then I'm going to fill in the assignment name. And then I'm going to choose a category. And let's just call this um, homework. Um, and like I said in the last video, uh, this is coming up as a 10 point default because that's what I set as the homework default. If I wanna make this a 20 point assignment, I can go ahead in here and manipulate that. Um, you can also manipulate points versus percentage. Um, not that we work on a percentage basis, it's just there. There's also the option to do collected only. Uh, you can also weight it if you want to. So here's where you would edit the weight and uh, give extra points if you would like to. Um, count in final grade, I do want this to count. Now, this right here is gonna be new to you guys because you've never had the ability to assign to multiple classes at once. So right now, if I leave this August 3rd, it's gonna be setting the due date of August 3rd in all four of these classes. If I, let's say, you know, wanna make it different for my history class, let's say we're going on a field trip tomorrow and they're not gonna hand it until Friday, I can click on this per class button and manipulate the due date per class. But I'm gonna click back to single due date and just keep it the same. If you wanna add a description, you can here. All right, but before I click save, I'm also gonna to toggle over to students. This is also new to you guys. If you would like to um, remove students from having to hand this in, you can. So by default, it assigns it to all of the students in the, in the classes that you selected. So a reason that you would want to actually remove students, um, let's say that in Maria Papadopoulos' English class, they're doing, you know, um, uh, narratives from books and they had three different books. So if one of the groups in class was of mice and men, she doesn't want to have that assignment listed for all of her students and then have to go through and hit exempt for each and every student that didn't do it. So you can assign stuff to only certain students in the class. Now are there other instances when it's definitely better to put up the assignment and just exempt the one or two kids that maybe have a medical thing going on or you know whatever. Um, of course, there are instances where the exemption is the better choice and this is all up to you. The nice thing is if you actually delete the kid from the assignment, the parent won't have the opportunity to go in there, get all confused and say, why is my, my kid exempt and what's going on with this assignment? Um, so that's the difference between those two. And then of course on this last tab we have um, publish and here are your options when to publish scores. You can do it on a specific date, uh, immediately on the due date or um, never. So I'm gonna click save. And once I save it, as you can see, you now have a link. It says assignment class contract created successfully. You can click on that right from there or you can just X out of this and then start to manipulate it in the assignment list or in the score sheet. So right now I'm in the history class. If I wanted to go into a different class, I would, but let's just let's just check one of the other classes. I'll go in my math class, make sure that class contract got in there. And there it is, it's in there, fine. So let's go back to that history class now. Again, I'm on the assignment list view right now, but if I go back to this grading tab, 
I can access that score sheet view instead, which is probably, like I said, where a lot of you are more comfortable here. So very similar to your old grade book in that we have um, columns with uh, due dates and um, assignment titles. Um, they're also gonna be color coded up here. Now I only have blue category right now, so that's why it all looks the same. And then of course you can scroll down to see the remainder of your students. And as we discussed in the last video, if you want, you can use your keyboard and use the command minus to view more of your gradebook at once. And that's my preference. Um, but I'm gonna make this bigger just so everyone can see in the video. Um, one of the nice features I noticed here that they put in um, was this link here, show assignments from most recent. So if I click show assignments from most recent, um, that's, it, it does exactly that. So it puts the most recent one closest to the names. Um, and then of course, if you do from least recent, you're looking at them in chronological order. So this would be August 3rd, and then there would be you know assignments from August 4th, and then 5th, and then 6th, et cetera. Um, whereas most recent is gonna put August 6th closest to the, the student names. So it's nice that you can toggle between that and you, know, you have a, a preference on your view. Uh, when you're ready to actually grade your assignment, all you have to do is click on any of these cells. And if, if you're doing this on an iPad, obviously you're just gonna touch the cells. Um, but as long as you touch any of these cells or click them, the score inspector comes up automatically here. You're not like right clicking on it, you're not double clicking, just one click and your score inspector will come up on the side over here. And as you can see, it's really nice. And the reason why there's these numbers here is so that if you're doing this from an iPad, you can actually like type in the numbers 95 or whatever. Um, for the sake of all of us, probably most of us using it on uh, a computer, you can just simply use your keyboard. So this was worth 10 points. I'm going to say the student got a 10 and just hit enter to go to the next cell. Um, now we do still have those nice features of filling. So let's say that most of the class got a 10. I don't want to type them all. If you look over here in the score inspector, we still do have the fill button. And I click OK and we get to fill all the way down. All right, there's also a new option here to fill horizontally. So I don't know how often you would use this, but it is here. So let's say that um, Parisa Austin um, has tens across the board on these couple assignments. I can click on this and click the horizontal fill and click OK as well. So this might be more applicable for maybe our phys ed teachers that are putting in, uh, you know, dress uh, grades every day or something like that. I don't, again, I don't know how often you'd use that one. If you want to delete a grade, just click on the inspector, hit delete. It's very simple. Um, and then, of course, after you do the fill, if we have students, let's say Bradley, he did not hand it in, he gets a zero. Let's say Kelly didn't hand it in, but she was absent. This might not be your best option because that's going to upset the parent. The, the better option here might be to use some of these really nice codes. So we have missing collected, late, absent, exempt, incomplete. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put an absent there. And it's nice because it's color coded. It's a little bit bigger than the, than the symbols that used to be in our old grade book. But I'm, that's just a note for me and a note for mom that you know Kelly was absent. It's not a zero, but it's also not handed in. Um, and then, you know, of course, I'm gonna delete this one. And we're gonna say that it was late. And so she got a five on it, or he got a five on it. So. Anyways, all of these codes are, are readily available. All you have to do is click on them. You can also use the comment box in one of two ways. So let's say um, I wanted to add a comment about Rami handing it in late. I can either click down here and just start typing in this comment box. Didn't have his binder in class. Okay, and if you can see, I now have a little blue uh, comment icon right here. So you can get to it like that, or if I click on any of these, there's also this button here, and that pops out a bigger area for you to be able to type. So I mean, essentially they do the same thing, they're both just a comment box, and uh, you can then, and the parent will be able to see um, those items in there. So that's just some of the basics of using um, the score sheet, uh, you know, creating assignments, and of course filling in the assignments. Um, you can always go back. I'm going to close my score inspector over here so I have a full view again. Um, for any assignment, you can, uh, you know, click on that column and then click on this edit assignment button. That's one way to edit the assignment, so I can click on it like that. 
and I come back to being able to manipulate points and due date and things like that, I'm going to X out of this. The other way to go back and edit an assignment is to go back to your grading tab here and look at the assignment list view instead. And then I can come back here to that class contract and edit it, of course, from over here. So, um, and then from this edit tab, you also down here have this duplicate button and that, that will do the same thing our old grade book that does. It'll literally duplicate everything in the, in the assignment itself, except for um, the title and you'll be able to give it a new title. So that'll be useful for those of you that do repetitive assignments. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please see Barbara DeLarma or myself. We'd be happy to help you. Um, it's very self-explanatory. Don't be nervous. It's much more easy to use. And I'm here if you need help.